Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a book review video, and I haven't done a book review video in like a month. And I'm sorry for the wait, just because I read a couple longer books than usual, and I'm at the bottom of the barrel in one of my book bags that I have. So these are the books that are in the bottom of the barrel that are longer to read, and some of them I just didn't really get through. I mean, some of them I didn't really like or get through that great. So let's get started with the book that I know a lot of people are probably praising right now, but I thought it was just okay. So this book was Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. It's the fifth book, I would guess, in the series, and this is what it looks like. It's a big book. I um, there's I forget how many pages there are in it. 658. And basically, this book, I remember when I was in, <laughs> excuse me, high school, and my one friend sent me the link to, like, the first chapter or something like that of this book, and I thought it was good, but I feel like this book altogether, it was just okay to me. Like, I didn't feel like, like, it didn't feel to me like, like, I don't know. For me, I feel like it was just, like, she put, she went back to the first Twilight book, inserted stuff from the first Twilight book, and then just wrote, like, added on to what he would have done in those situations, and stuff like that. I feel like this book could have been half of what it was, just because of the fact that it's just Edward's point of view. Like, you could have just put, like, oh, like when they were in labs, like, biology together or whatever, like, it could it didn't have to put all the stuff that was in the first book into it she could have just wrote it in his point of view and I feel like that's what I didn't like about it was like was just because she just it was basically just like the same book I thought it was just gonna be all in his point of view and it was but I feel like I'm trying to explain it but it's just to me it's just she just copied stuff that she wrote in the first book and then like a couple pages later would get into his point of view which I get, but it's like, most people probably read the first book before they bought this book. Maybe, I don't know. But to me, it was just like, I felt like it, it could have been shorter just based on that. Like, you didn't have to go back into the first book and put stuff in the first book. Like, you could have just put it in. And it was a whole, whole, whole point of view. The only thing I liked about it was at, towards the end of the book, where it got better. Where it was mostly his point of view on trying to find Bella and find the vampires that took her and that type of thing. That part of the book I really liked better than the whole entire book altogether because that was the most the most part of the book that was mostly in his point of view type of thing. So yeah, so I feel like that's see that's what I'm talking about. It's like instead of like that part was all his point of view. And I feel like the first half of the book was mostly like stuff that happened in the first book that he was just like retelling and stuff like that and I didn't like that I liked it better at the end when it was mostly his point of view than like a retelling of the first book type of thing I don't know if she's gonna do all of the stories but I feel like uh, this book could have been shorter to me apparent like for me and I really didn't get into it and I think I don't know if it's just because like I like Harry Potter better than I do Twilight I don't know maybe that's why I don't know but that's what I think of it to me. It's like when you tell a story from a different point of view or a person's point of view or whatever, I feel like if it's like an event that happens in your life and you have like seven different people, like they're not going to say the same thing and then just add on to like, yeah, because everybody's point of view is different. If that makes any more sense. So this one, I know a lot of people won't read this book, but I got it because... I like birds. I like bird watching. And some of these books, um, birds I don't know anything about just because they don't live around where I live. But it's called The Book of North American Birds. It's by Reader's Digest. I couldn't find, like, an author's name. But basically, it's a, it's separated into different parts. And it's basically, it goes into thorough detail about the bird and a little bit of history on a different on the birds and then the bottom half of the page tells you like different things about the bird like its wingspan and how tall it is what the eggs look like stuff like that but the thing with me is like some of the birds when they're grouped together in a certain like there was like a ton of warblers in this book and most of the time the bottom 
of the page where it says like oh the facts about this war blur they're mostly the same like they re they're repetitive of the of different warblers in the book so i'm just like why couldn't it just say on the bottom like see warbler whatever you know what i mean that type of thing but the, the pages were really good it tells you their genus and species it tells you where in this a map of the states where you um you can see the birds like green means i think it was full-time birds like where they live all year round yellow was summer and blue was winter and this is just a random page i put up this is the birds of prey section and this is what it looks like like you see the birds genus and species a little thing the map little tidbit of information more information and then the bottom has like the random facts like recognition habitat nesting and food and this is what the front of it looks like there's not really like a it's um, i like the cover of it because i like owls but this is what it looks like and that was the second book that i finished um so it took me a while to get through just because like i thought like oh like this part's only how many pages but then it would take me like an hour to read like four pages of these birds so this book was a book i really didn't get into and it's just because it's a long book now, like i like to read mystery books this is a mystery book but this book let me tell you guys it was too long for a mystery book in my opinion um it was let me see how many pages it was um 511 pages and usually when i read mystery books there may be like 200 some pages this book i just didn't really like and i didn't get why it was called this it was called original sin it was it's an adam dang danglish mystery it's by pd james this is what it looks like and basically it was about this man who runs this editing company and he dies in this like apartment thing that's on top of their building and they call this thing it's like this it's like a what they call it, i forget what they call it really but it's like a snake where it's a snake that you know you put um like beneath your doors in the winter time so that cold air doesn't come in that's what somebody strangled him with that and it was just too long of a story it was the the chapters were really long in it it was basically in parts it was like in book one is it, it, they put it in books format so it's book one book two book three big book four and book five and there wasn't any yeah there was chapters in it and it was the chapters where in the book where it's it goes by different people so it's like the first book's about certain people second book's about certain characters that type of thing and if you like and the other thing that sucks is like they all work in the same building but the other thing too is that you have to keep them straight in your head so it's like if you forget oh this person is with this person or this person doesn't like this person it gets confusing but the one thing is like they didn't get to the one thing about this book was that the original sin part they only mentioned original sin like one time in the book and i and it was a part of the book where i wasn't really paying attention because i really didn't get into the story because it was so long and most of the storyline in this book really didn't matter to the story at all to me anyway i just feel like they could have like separated these stories like you didn't need a lot of this in this book like this book is long for mystery it's long for me anyway so I'm just like, if the book's gonna be really long for a mystery, it better attract my attention. And I don't, I don't think it did for the whole book. So this book was a book I think I got for like a present. I think it was like for Easter or something like that one year. And it's a Harlequin series book, kind of. It's Harlequin, must love dogs kind of book. It's called The Cowboy Surprise. There's two novels in this story. Story, excuse me. It's by Kathy Gillian Thacker and Allie Olson. This is what it looks like. And the first book, I really didn't like. I just didn't like how drawn out it was type of thing. It was called, um, the first book was called The Texas Cowboys Baby Rescue. And it was about this woman who she was driving along to her way to work. She was like a nurse at a hospital. And she finds this stray dog and this dog leads her to... A baby that somebody just left next to the fire station or something 
And when they take it to the hospital, there's this note saying that this is the baby's dad. And when the baby's dad comes in, he says about how this baby can't be my baby. I don't remember. Like, don't remember that happening and stuff like that. And then here they end up taking care of the baby together until at least they figure out where the mom is and where the dad is. And this woman wants to adopt the baby and stuff because she did have some, like, fostering um credentials and stuff but she really wanted to have her own family that type of thing and so she wanted to um adopt this baby and the dog and that's basically what the whole story is about but it just it's just a drawn out story there was a lot of um stuff in the book that I don't want to say happens that I'm just like really like did you just want to add that in for like filler or something like that the second book was was way better than the first one, and it was called The Bull Rider's Twin Trouble. And it was about this bull rider man who, he, he um, ends up getting hurt when he does this, like, rodeo thing. But he ends up going to this place where his mom lives, and, well, it's his mom slash aunt because his mom died. His mom dad died when he was younger, and his aunt and uncle adopted him. And basically... He goes over to help out these this new neighbor who's a doctor who's moved into this house so she can have, like, her home office doctor visit stuff out of the house. And he has one rule when he dates women is, is he doesn't want them to have kids because he lives a reckless life and he doesn't want to leave them without a dad in their life. And he debates about it back and forth a lot and stuff like that. And it was a really nice book. It was, it was a better book storyline than the first one was in my opinion and I read a couple of Kathy Gillian Thacker's books before and I liked them so I didn't understand why I didn't like that one so this one I think was the best one out of all the books that I read this time this one is it's a Cheryl Woods story I wanted when I finished this book I was debating about if I wanted to read the other books in the series and it turns out there's only three and this is the second book in the series this was an old series it was from 2013 and it's called Windchime Point. It's an ocean breeze novel. It's by Cheryl Woods. This is what it looks like. She wrote... I always get them confused, but she wrote the Chesapeake Shore books. I always get them confused with the Debbie Macumber Cedar Cove books. Because it's basically like the same thing, kind of, but different in a way. And these are kind of like the Chesapeake Shore books, if you read them or if you read Cedar Cove books. They're kind of like that same different thing. And I read this book really fast. The other books took me forever to read. And this book, I think it was just because it drew my interest. It was a book that I liked. So, yeah. And it's about this woman who she gets pregnant by this man. And she tells the man that she's pregnant. This happened in the first book, I guess. Where she found that she was pregnant, she told her boyfriend. Her boyfriend didn't want the baby. Um, she lost her job and she moves. She moves back to this place, the this little small town, and her she has her sisters and her grandma, and she wants to give the baby up for adoption because she's like, I don't want, I don't want this baby because, you know, how am I supposed to take care of it? I don't have a job anymore. I don't have the hut. I don't have the boyfriend with me anymore. That type of thing. And here she starts um, getting involved with this Wade guy. The woman's name is Gab Gabriella or Gabby, and she's starting to fall for this Wayne guy. And um, something in the Wayne's life happened to him. And when somebody tells him uh, what tells Gabby about this, she thinks that it's just because he just wants to be with her because of what happened with his family. And stuff like that. But it's a really good book. I really liked it. I mean, I would have liked if it was more than, like, three books in the series, basically. But I really liked it. I liked it. It was a cute book. And then, um, I, if she decides if she's going to keep the baby or not. Now, this book really irritated me. It's the first book in a series. And it's called How to Wash Your Cat. And I really didn't get into this book. I thought it was kind of weird. It's by Rebecca M. Hale. This is what it looks like. I don't know. Did I show you this one Shine Point book? I don't know if I did. This is what it looks like. But um, this is what this one looks like. And it's about this woman who she goes to um, see her uncle Oscar who owns this like antique shop. And he dies. And so she has to decide if she wants to keep her uncle's antique shop or not. 
But the one thing that I don't get about this book at all is, is the main character in this book does not have a name. Like, even on the back of the book, I read the synopsis in the back of the book, and it still doesn't say a name. It doesn't say the character's name. Like, every time this woman gets introduced to somebody, they always just say, oh, you're Uncle Oscar's niece, or Oscar's niece. And she's like, yep, that's me. She never says her name. And I'm like, did the author intend to do that? Because I feel like that's just a weird thing to me, is like, you go the whole book without saying her name one time. That's just weird to me, to be honest. Because it's just like... I don't know. But it's just it's just weird. And I don't know if it's like that. Like, if I read another book by this author and if it's the same series, I don't know if... Um, I don't know. It was just... It just irritated me. That the, like, it's just weird that the main character did not have a name. She just didn't have a name. And I don't know. But it was about, um, she finds these, uh, this, um, <clears throat> stuff during, um, the gold rush era where it was this man who apparently he was alive during the gold rush and all this stuff happened and he died before the gold rush happened, but he found gold. And here they find out that when, um, that he died, he didn't really die. He took like this potion to make him sleep and then somebody bar um, dug him up when like later on after they buried him and stuff like that and they wanted to know if he was still alive or what happened to him that type of thing it was a really weird book I didn't really enjoy it um it's called how to wash a cat because it was her two cats Rupert and Isabella are in it and I kind of I kind of thought when I seen the cat thing that it was gonna be kind of like the cat who books that I usually like to read, but it wasn't. It was just weird. I just can't get past the fact that this, the main character in the story did not have a name. I just thought that was kind of weird. And I don't know if that's how Rebecca M. Hale does her work. I don't know. So the last book I have is a book that it's not really that interesting because it doesn't have like a title page or a title cover or something like that. This is what it looks like. This book is Twice Told Tales by Nathaniel Hawthorne, and I'm halfway through the book, and it's an okay book. It's basically just, like, some short stories, so some short stories are better than others. I like the ones that are kind of, like, haunting type of thing, but yeah, it was a good book. Um, I got this book, um, like, I don't know how many years it's been, maybe, like, four years now or something like that, where, um... When my cousin got married, her centerpieces around her wedding and for, like, her bridal shower and stuff were, like, different little knick-knack things and, like, old books. And I have some of the old books. I did read one of the old books I got from that, from that, those events before. And I, it was a good, it's a good book. I'm, like I said, I'm, like, halfway through it. There's, like, 500 pages in it. But I just wanted to do that because I thought, like, I would be able to finish it before I did the book review video, but I really wanted to do a book review video because I haven't done one in a while. But some of the short stories are longer than others. Some of them, like, are basically just, like, description stories where there's no dialogue. It's just describing, like, a scene or something like that. But that was a good book, too, so far. Some of the stories, like I said, are harder to, for me to get into, and some weren't. But that was my book review video for this month. I uh, hope, I hope that it does, like, the next set of books that I have, um, probably, I'll probably read them, like, really fast, because they're gonna be not long books like these ones were, so hopefully by the end of February, I might have another book review video for you guys, hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys next time with another book review video.